Yeah, share your screen, then start recording. Okay, is it recording now? Yes, it's recording. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Today's presentation is about a disease called restless leg syndrome or RLS. Restless leg syndrome uh, is a common sensory motor neurological disorder that causes an irresistible urge to move legs, usually because of an uncomfortable sensation. It typically happens in the evening or nighttime hours when you are sitting or lying down and moving eases the unpleasant feeling temporarily. Restless leg syndrome, also known as Willis Eckbaum disease, can begin at any age and generally worsen as you age. RLS can disrupt sleep, which interferes with daily activities. Simple safe care uh, steps and lifestyle changes may help relieve symptoms. Medication also help many people with RLS. There are two types of RLS described as primary and secondary RLS. Primary type is also called idiopathic. Researchers sus uh, suspect that the condition may be caused by an imbalance of the brain chemical dopamine, which sends messages to control muscle movement. Sometimes RLS runs in families, especially if the condition starts before age 40. Researchers have identified sites on the chromosomes where genes for RLS may be present. But secondary RLS occurs in association with predisposing conditions, including pregnancy, iron deficiency anemia, multiple sclerosis, Parkinsonism, rheumatoid arthritis, diabetes, alcohol abuse, excess caffeine or chocolate intake, acute spinal cord lesions and a stroke, hypoglycemia, hypothyroidism, some drugs like tetracycline, tricyclic antidepressants, beta blockers and lithium and obesity. The two epidemiological studies from South India found prevalence rates of RLS to be approximately 2%. Whereas the prevalence of RLS among patients with iron deficiency, Parkinson's disease and CKD, also depression is much higher. The prevalence of RLS varies among different populations and the severity of symptoms essential for the diagnosis. RLS uh, occurs in children with an incidence of 2%. The incidence is high among children whose biological parents are affected with this disease. In another study, it was observed that prevalence in women is twice that in men. And uh, that is increases in, uh, up, to, in the age of, uh, up to age of 79 years. In India, a survey conducted in Bangalore reported prevalence of 2.1%, with 1.2% of those reporting disrupted sleep. The, pre the prevalence of RLS in pregnancy is around 11 to 27%, with the risk of it being two or three times higher than general population. And in hemodialysis patient, prevalence is 6 to 60%. Silent symptoms. The chief symptoms in urge to move the legs. Common symptoms include sensation that begins after rest. Like the sensation typically begins after you have been lying or sitting for an extended time. Relief with movement. The sensation of RLS uh, lessens with movement, such as stretching, shaking the leg, pacing, or walking. Worsening of symptoms in the evening. Symptoms occur mainly at night. Nighttime leg twitching, RLS may be associated with another more common condition called periodic limb movement of a sleep, which causes your legs to twitch and kick, possibly throughout the night while you sleep. People typically describe RLS symptoms as abnormal, unpleasant sensation in their legs or feet, which is mostly in calves. They usually happen on both sides of the body, and uh, less commonly the sensations affect the arms. These sensations are described as crawling, creeping, pulling, dropping, aching, itching, and electric. Sometimes these sensations are difficult to explain, and people with RLS usually don't describe the condition as a muscle cramp or a numbness. Pathophysiology. 
The majority of case, primary, case of primary RLS appears to be video packet in origin, and uh, genetic factors are important in the develop, in development of RLS. A positive family history of RLS has been reported in, by 40% to 60% of patients. Pathophysiology of RLS is still partially understood, uh, but the most accepted pathways include dopaminergic dysfunction, reduced central nervous system iron, or alteration in neurotransmitters such as hypocretins, endorphins levels, and immune dysfunction, and inflammatory mechanisms. The symptomatic response to, with, dopam with dopamine agonists and levodopa prove that the dysfunction of the dopaminergic system may play a role in pathophysiology of the disease. The neuroimaging studies demonstrated a postsynaptic and presynaptic dopamine receptor binding dysfunction at the level of the uh, basal ganglia. Some studies have shown reduced, increased, and unchanged dopamine receptor binding, thereby uh, suggesting conflicting evidence of dysfunction of the dopamine system. And iron is a cofactor for uh, tyrosine hydroxylase, which is a rate-limiting step in the conversion of levodopa to dopamine. Therefore, decrease in iron may affect the availability, av availability of dopamine. It has been identified that variation in the activity of tyrosine hydroxylase that may account for the worsening of symptoms in the night. And the hypocretin are neurotransmitters produced by hypothalamus that are essential for normal control of a sleep cycle. They increase aerosol and want to interact with the dopamine system. It is identified that there is an increase in uh, hypocretin levels in the cerebrospinal fluid in the early onset RMS. Risk factors for RLS, um, RLS can develop at any age, even during childhood, and the disorder is more common with uh, increasing age. RLS usually isn't related to a serious underlying medical problem, underlying medical problem. However, however, it sometimes accompanies other conditions, such as peripheral neuropathy, iron deficiency, kidney failure, and spinal cord conditions. This damage to the nerves in your hands and feet is sometimes due to chronic disease such as diabetes and alcoholism. Uh, even without anemia, iron deficiency can cause or worsen RLS. If you have a history of bleeding from your stomach, experience heavy menstrual periods, or repeatedly donate blood, you may uh, have iron deficiency. And if you have kidney failure, you may also have iron deficiency often, often with anemia. When kidneys don't function properly, iron stores in uh, blood can decrease. These and other changes in body chemistry may cause or worsen RLS. And lesions on the spinal cord as a result of damage or injury have been linked to RLS, having had anesthesia or to the spinal cord, such as spinal blood also increases the risk of RLS. Uh, there are no standardized tests that are diagnostic of RLS. Measurement of iron stores with seroferritin, total iron binding capacity, percentage of transferrin saturation, serum cobalamin and urea, creatinine, and glucose can be helpful. Uh, diagnosis of RLS is based on the following criteria established by the International Restless Leg Syndrome Study Group. If you have a strong, often irresistible urge to move your legs, usually accompanied by uncomfortable sensations. Your symptoms, your symptoms start or get worse when you are resting, such as sitting or lying down. Symptoms are partially or temporarily relieved by activities, such as walking or stretching. Symptoms are worse at night, and uh, symptoms can be explained solely by another medical or behavior condition. The doctor may conduct a physical and neurological exam, blood test, particularly for iron deficiency. In addition, um, the doctor may refer you to a sleep specialist. This may involve an overnight stay at a sleep clinic where doctors can study your sleep if another sleep disorder such as sleep apnea is suspected. Supportive uh, diagnostic criteria is presence of positive family history in primary restless uh, leg syndrome, which is seen in more than 50% of patients. 
positive response to dopaminergic therapy and sleep disturbances with periodic limb, limb uh, movement in sleep which is seen is in 85% of patients. For treatment, several prescription medications, most of which were developed to treat other diseases, diseases are available to help ILS. Levodopal may be recommended if you only have symptoms occasionally, continuous use of levodopal can make your symptoms worse. It's therefore only taken once the patient feels the symptoms are coming in, like sudden symptoms, like once in a while. In the dose of 50 mg to 200 mg. Dopamine agonists, uh, this medication affects level of the chemical messenger dopamine in your brain and our first line treatment. Propinirol, roticotin, and promipexol are approved by the Food and Drug Administration for the treatment of moderate to severe ILS. The recommended dose for promipexol is 0 0.125 mg daily if necessary. It can be increased of one in 0, 0 0.125 mg every two or three days until symptoms improvement. The recommended of efficacious dose for rofinirol is comprised between 0 0.25 to 3 mg once per day and for rutigotin 1 mg every 24 hours that might be titrated upward to a maximum dose of 3 mg. Short-term side effects of these medications are usually mild and include nausea, lightheadedness, and fatigue. However, they can also cause impulse control disorders such as compulsive gambling and daytime sleepiness. The dopamine agonist pergolite is currently withdrawn due to its reported toxicity of restrictive valvular heart disease and retroperitoneal fibrosis. And uh, carbagulin showed high efficacy, efficacy but uh, its risk of valvular heart disease preclude its recommendation in a routine clinical practice. Anticoagulant cells are an alternative to dopaminergic therapy for the treatment of chronic RLS. Certain medications such as gabapentin and acarbi and pregabalin work for some people with RLS. Gabapentin and acarbi at a dose of, uh, it was 300, I think. Was of 300 to 1,200 mg per day, and there is no, there is insufficient evidence regarding efficacy of gabapentin. But a dose of 800 mg has been considered useful as supplementary medication in patients treating the dopaminergic agent. Dose of 25 mg to 300 mg for three to six days of pregabalin also is helpful. Benzodiazepines, colonoscopy. Dose of 0.5 mg to 2 mg is one of the first few earlier drugs that were considered in treatment of RLS. It tends to improve sleep, but it was not effective in reducing the motor and sensory abnormalities. Hence, it was uh, concluded that colonoscopy had therapeutic effect on insomnia, but not on limb movement. Short-acting uh, agents like teriazolam, zolotrom, and temazepam, so epidem also were effective. Opioids, uh, narcotic medication can relieve mild to severe symptoms as they decrease the release of neurotransmitters uh, resulting in analgesic effect, but they may be addicting if used in high doses. Some examples include traumadol, codeine, oxycodone, and uh, hydrocodone. The use of prolonged release, oxycodone, naloxone, uh, 10 to 5 mg twice daily there was efficacious in reducing RLS severity and improving data symptoms with very low incidence of adverse effects. Uh, other drugs also are available like carbamazepine. Uh, side effects like sedation and liver function abnormalities prevented from being used for trophy of RLS. Also, RN supplementation was shown to be effective in treatment of uh, RLS patients who had low serum there is some non-pharmacological treatment also, which uh, with making simple lifestyle change can help, like apply warm or cool packs, try baths and massage, establish good sleep hygiene, exercise, avoid caffeine, consider using the food wrap. Uh, these are non-pharmacological.
okay <clears throat> good that was a nice presentation so restless uh, let's syndrome actually we have read this in our syllabus do you remember in which uh, subject in which year we have read this anybody pt3 sir yes where pt3 correct neurological disorders you know Hello. 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 Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, can can you all hear me now? Yes, sir. Uh, you are telling uh, neurological disorder. I was telling neurological disorder is not there in P three, no. We have psychiatric disorder. Ah, uh, psychiatric. Mm -hmm. So um, psychiatric disorder, which chapter? Where? Under sleep disorders. The this comes mm -hmm. under sleep disorders, no? Ah, uh, sir. Yes, but one one of the very famous place, you know, psychiatric disorder, which drug you have seen very often. You have seen very often as uh, dopamine, isn't it? In almost like um, Parkinsonism, schizophrenia. Dopamine is coming very often, either like uh, Parkinsonism where you need to give dopamine, and um, in the other psychiatric disorder where you where you need to antagonize dopamine. And you saw one of the treatment modalities of this RLS is dopamine. So um, when we talk about um, dopamine antagonist kind of like the disorder where we use dopamine antagonist like most of the psychiatric disorder like schizophrenia and all, there we have read uh, as one of the side effect of this drug as RLS. Okay, and uh, when we uh, treat the patient um, Parkinson patient with um, um, like a Parkinson patient, even when we we have addressed the RLS there all as well. So. So RLS is one of the like um, um, Ida. Can you tell us uh, the incidence, like how common or how rare is this disease? Um, I in India, I think um, I checked it. You had you had saw one survey in Bangalore also, no? Yeah. yeah. She has given two surveys. It's two person. Two epidemiological studies. Mm -hmm. Two percent. So in children, two percent. Okay, uh, prevalence two percent. So, and that's Bangalore two point one percent. Okay, good, good kind of data. Mm -hmm. At the same time, you also try to um, put some reference. Okay, like you yeah. have given this many data. No, like you have that. This source that you have taken yeah, from this uh, some source. And then you try to put the reference for those uh, corresponding data, yeah. so it will become easier. Hmm? Okay, so 2% but um, we don't often see this patient in our setup now. No, Anybody sir. have seen? I have seen two patients that they have they had started clonazepam first. No, I mean when, in our in a Baptist Paris. hospital, no? Yes, sir, Baptist one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hey, you should include drug induced RLS also. Yeah, because that that is what I was emphasizing. That is where we have read uh, in. Drugs also will cause. Mm. I added some. Have you included? Have you included some drugs as etiology? I mentioned here like three cyclic antidepressants, beta blockers, and lithium. Okay. okay. And uh, I think selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. Hmm. Main important drug only you have not written. Dopamine antagonist. Hmm? We are giving dopamine here, no, as a treatment. Yeah, yeah, dopamine antagonist. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Anybody Your have any questions? Becomes can... very clumsy. Either you have prepared the slides uh, to give some space, you know. Mm. 
because it's already like 12, I think, pages. Mm -hmm. That, that yeah. doesn't matter if, if you see it with two, three slides, but try to make it more cleaner and then uh, more aesthetic just so that people will be gasping. And even though they don't listen you or follow you, they should be able to understand just having a glance to a slide. Yes, okay, I'll do it next time. Okay, see, this kind of presentation, we have, our focus is, our objective is not only to understand the knowledge or subject, but also um, how you present yourself when you do some presentation in public. So, we learn that skill also. Okay, this is the opportunity, this is the time where, when you can learn all these things. I have one doubt, sir. Like, um, mm -hmm. if the patient has any comorbid condition associated with the RLS, uh, should the Condition be treated first, or the RLS be treated. Like if you treat what the condition, condition depends on condition like any, again. Any OSA the patient has. If you treat OSA, then RLS will go. Yeah, you know that there OSA is no, is, could be one of the symptoms. One of the so there is no need of uh, there is no need of uh, treating RLS. Yeah, case. if again it all depends on risk benefit. See how risky how. Troublesome is RLS to the patient. If you if you are treating the OSA and RLS is getting uh, improved, then no need to address that. If you are treating, um, though you are treating OSA, but still patient is much troubled with RLS, then definitely you may have to give some. You may have to start with some minor treatment. No, it depends. Okay, it's not, okay. there is no hard and fast rule for that. I guess. Does it cause any serious complications, sir? It's more of like psychiatric uh, complications. Yeah. Hello. Yeah, can you hear us? You're saying case presentation, no? You're presenting a case here, huh? Yeah, exactly, exactly. This is what you know. Not your titles, you know? what you have put. Mm. That's what I'm looking for a case anyway. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Just a presentation on uh, restlessness. That's it. Restless syndrome. Yeah. yeah. Just if you give restless leg syndrome enough. Um, why should it occur only in the night? I had been this silly doubt, I don't know. But uh, I didn't get any proper uh, answer. Mm, yes, I uh, What would you like to add on this? Uh... Pathophysiology, I mentioned kind of. Mm -hmm. Because it usually occurs at resting. So, maybe it has mentioned it. Mm, the person can rest, like uh, night duty workers can will be sleeping in the morning. So, why can in the morning? Mm. Yeah. It's mentioned like when there is no movement of limb, like leg and all, then it occurs. So, so night, for night duty people, night becomes night becomes morning. For night duty people, night becomes day, no? Hmm? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any yeah, like the variation in the activity of uh, virus and hydroxylase may account uh, for worsening of symptoms in the night? Pardon? So it always requires treatment, sir. Here somewhere it is mentioned, see, orexin A are neurotransmitters produced by hypothalamus that are essential for normal control of sleep cycle. So this is how it is related to sleep. Hmm? Okay. So sleep cycle basically we are telling, we are not telling day, night, something like that, because most of the people sleep in the night, that's why we are told about night. So basically it, affect, it is related to the sleep cycle. Okay. Yeah, somebody asked some other question, yes. Uh, yes, sir, like people normally do that, no, sir. That is the same as this RLS, so I'm asking, like whether it requires treatment compulsory. See, if you remember one of the um, rule, one of the one of the principle to treat uh, any kind of psych, like obsessive, obsessive, you have OCD. Yeah, mm. disorder. So how when you treat that, everybody have some a milder form of OCD, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. 
Hmm. When it's disturbing a normal physiological activity or something like that. No, uh, then we have to do it. If it's paining, uh, uh, causing us. many complications. Okay. Hmm. No. I'm... See, uh, for almost all the psychiatric disorder, we we when when we start treatment is when they start uh, affecting their normal lives.